Hi guys. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to tie a rebar. Now there's many different ties and there's a lot of different variations. I'm gonna be showing you guys the simple single wire snap tie and this is the way I tie, this is my preference and this is what I like to do. There's many different ties and they're used for different applications. However, your single wire snap tie is your most common tie and it's incorporated in all other ties. So you should get comfortable and very good at your single wire snap ties. Now before you guys even start tying, you're gonna need the proper tools. You're gonna need a wire reel with a roll of wire in there and you're also gonna need some pliers. I like to use Klein products because they just have the best quality. So my wire reel, my wire reel pad, and my pliers are all made from Klein. There's all different sorts of pliers on the market. And when you go to type in ironworker pliers, there's gonna be ones that are different sizes, different thicknesses, and different colors. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you're gonna to wanna to get. So looking at some pliers, these right here are my clunker pliers and they look pretty much the same. They have a blue handle, they're both nine inches. This one doesn't have the same end as this, but that really doesn't matter. They're pretty much completely the same. However, the big difference lies in the teeth. These ones have very jagged teeth and these ones have very fine teeth. You're gonna wanna have the pliers that have jagged and aggressive teeth because they hold on to your wire much better than the fine teeth. With the jagged teeth, they're less likely to slip off your wire, which when, when your pliers slip off your wire, you could hit yourself in the face, you could hit yourself in the nuts, and you just don't wanna have those type of problems in your life. So those other pliers were my clunkers. Here I have my speed pliers. Now, the color is obviously different. However, they are pretty much exactly the same except for in the teeth again. You always want the large jagged teeth versus the small fine teeth. When you guys get your pliers new, there's usually gonna be a spring on the inside. You're gonna wanna cut that spring out and go full manual because the spring will slow you down. You might think it's easier because it's gonna open up the pliers for you, but I. Trust me, it's gonna slow you down, okay? So now you're gonna be in a position where you have to open up the pliers with your hands. You're gonna to wanna to either open your pliers up with your index finger or your pinky finger. When you open it up with your index finger, it allows the teeth to open up even more, allowing you to not have to be as accurate when you go and grab stuff. Now that you have the right pliers and that you have the right hand position on them, you might wanna customize them a little bit. On this pair, I have a milker on my pliers. This allows me to reach a little bit further back on them so that when I keel, I have a little bit more leverage. It's also a little bit more comfortable and it gives more cushion so that when you start tying, you're gonna get less calluses on your hands. Some maintenance that you're gonna wanna do on your pliers is you're always gonna wanna have them greased up so that there's no friction whenever you're opening and closing them. You're gonna to wanna to use WD-40, and when you use your WD-40, you're gonna put it in the different crevices of the pliers. And then you're gonna open and close them a couple of times, and you should see some dark grease come out of the circle inside of the joint. That's how you know that you're getting all the stuff that'll create more friction in the joint that'll just slow you down. You wanna get all that out. The WD-40 will help you do that. So now that you have your pliers ready to go, here I'm holding it in my right side. Now we're gonna hold our wire properly. And I have that on my left side. Now, typically when you get your wire, it's gonna be straight. And when you hold your wire here with your left hand, you're gonna to wanna to make a little gun or a little L, okay? And you're gonna hold your wire exactly like this. You're gonna have the holding end inside your middle ring and pinky finger with your index finger just touching it at the tip and your thumb is gonna be free. And then you're also gonna to wanna to have a little hook on your wire so that you're able to hook the rebar. Now when we have our wire in our hand, there's gonna be two ends. There's gonna be our running end, the end with the hook, and there's gonna be our holding end. And that's the end where we're actually holding and that's closest to us. Now that we have our wires and our pliers ready, now we can come over to our tie rack. Now, I just made this tie rack today. It's kinda shitty, but you know what? It's gonna get the job done. 
Now, this Tyrek has number fours. That means it's half inch in diameter. Rebar comes in different sizes and they start at three and they go all the way up to 18 and beyond. Now they go in eighths of an inch. So because this is a number four and four over eight equals one half. So they're one half inch. And typically number fours are the most common type of rebar that you're gonna use no matter what application you're gonna be in, whether it's footing, whether it's PT decks, whether it's anything at all, you're gonna be using number fours very often. Now, when you tie a rebar, you're gonna to wanna to read it because it does matter which direction you enter through the cross. When I say the cross, this is what I mean. Here's where the rebar crosses. And now we're gonna take a little trip back to math class. There's four quadrants. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. You're never going to enter through quadrant one or quadrant two because it's just very uncommon and it's awkward when you tie like that and you'll just never do it. So you're always going to enter your, your wire into quadrant three or quadrant four. So when we're reading our rebar, you're going to want to consider the foremost bar. That means the bar that's closest to you. Now the bar is going to be either perpendicular to your eyes or it's going to be parallel to your eyes. Now, it doesn't matter whether the cross is on the floor, whether it's straight up vertical in front of you, or if it's overhead, there's always going to be a bar closest to you and there's going to be a bar furthest away. Now, when the bar is parallel to your eyes, that when the closest bar to you is parallel to your eyes, you're going to be entering through quadrant four and exiting quadrant two. When the foremost bar is vertical or perpendicular to your eyes, meaning it makes a right angle, you're gonna wanna enter through quadrant three and exit through quadrant one. So starting with the bar perpendicular to our eyes, step one, we're gonna enter our wire into quadrant three and exit out quadrant one. Step two, grab your wire. You're gonna grab the wire with your pliers and I wouldn't grab it at the very end. I would just grab it anywhere in the middle and you want to do that just because it's way easier and you don't have to be as accurate. I like to grab the pliers underhand just because it's easier to turn your wrist slightly clockwise than it is to turn it slightly counterclockwise. In step three, you're going to want to give your wire a good little tug so that it's tight. In step four, we're gonna take our holding end and we're gonna simply push it across our crosshair. Then in step five, we're gonna take our running end and we're gonna stab our pliers into quadrant one. Make sure that this movement is a stab and not a go around your holding end. I wanna make sure that you guys get step four right and push that wire all the way out of your way so you can simply go up and down with your pliers. In step six, you're simply gonna pull your left hand back and, and bring that wire as well, and it'll make a small little twist as you can see. Then here in step seven, you're gonna turn your tie. Step eight, you're gonna cut your tie. Step nine is the hardest part, and here you're gonna make your hook for your next tie. And so what you're gonna do is, with your left hand still cocked like a gun, you're gonna push it in slightly while turning your left hand counterclockwise such that it makes a hook as so. This part you're gonna need a lot of practice on. You're gonna try it and you're gonna be like, how does he do that? Trust me, it's, gonna, it's just gonna take time. It works, you can do it. Now what a lot of guys try to do in order to make the hook for their next tie is they're gonna use their pliers to push it over into a hook so that you can go and be ready for your next time. I try to steer away from putting all the work on my right hand because the right hand is already doing so much work. It's grabbing, it's stabbing, it's twisting, and you just wanna give as much work to your left hand as possible. So that's why I like to make the hook with my left hand. You can use your right, however, I recommend using your left. Furthermore, here in step nine, you're gonna wanna consider the direction of your tying. So because my wire is in my left hand, I wanna be tying from right to left. This is so that when I get done tying, I can move my left hand 
over to my next crosshair. When you tie from left to right, you have to finish your tie before you can actually start any step on your next cross. Next, we're going to enter our wire into the next cross. However, we're not done with our original tie. I want you guys to twist it one more time just to make sure it's good and tight. Now here, you guys can add extra steps if you want. You can choose to keel and you can choose to cut. I don't recommend this if you're tying, especially on mats, because the rebar is already going to be butt up against each other and it's going to be tight. However, for vertical bars, I recommend that you give it a good little keel just to make sure that it's tight. I also don't recommend that you guys cut off the tail because it's just an, an extra unnecessary step. However, if you choose to do so, you can do so. The reason why I don't want you guys to cut off the tails is because when it's longer, it can bend much easier. Somebody can fall and put their hand out and a short tail is very strong and it can stab through your gloves or any clothing. A very long tail is much weaker and so it'll bend under any type of weight. I recommend that you guys hit down your tails whenever you're done, especially when you cut the tail short so that nobody gets stabbed. Anybody can walk by it and if they have exposed skin, it can really make them bleed real bad. Now that we've twisted our tie a second time and no matter what you do with the tails, now we're going to go on to our next tie. And we're just going to continue this process over and over again. And in rebar, you'll be doing hundreds to thousands of these ties every day. So get comfortable doing it. Now I'm going to show you guys six consecutive ties with the foremost bar perpendicular to your eyes. Next, we're going to tie the bar where it is parallel to our eyes, and it's pretty much exactly the same. However, the start is very different. You're going to enter through quadrant four and exit out of quadrant two. We're going to grab our wire. Anywhere you want is fine. We're going to give it a good little pull. We're going to push our holding end across to the right, and you might think we're going to stab our pliers into quadrant two, but no, we're going to again stab our pliers into quadrant one and then we're going to pull our holding end back. Now, some guys might always enter through quadrant four and exit out of quadrant two, even when the foremost bar is perpendicular to your eyes. However, this is not necessary because the only thing that actually tightens the tie is twists and keels with your pliers. That natural extra twist that entering quadrant four does won't help your ties be stronger. So now that we've pulled our wire back, we're gonna twist, gonna make our divvy with our left hand. Remember, push in slightly and with our left hand still cocked like a gun, we're gonna turn it counterclockwise and make our hook. Now we're going to enter our wire into our next cross and we're going to finish our original tie with a turn, maybe a keel and a cut if you so choose. And this right here is what six consecutive ties where the foremost bar that's horizontal to your eyes looks like. I want you guys to steer away 
from moving your pliers like this around your holding end of your wire. It's extra work on your right hand and ultimately it's gonna slow you down. I also don't want you guys to do your slight twist, keel and twist all in one motion. I want you guys to do it in two different motions because it just results in a better time. When you do a slight twist, keel and twist, that's ultimately just one twist and it doesn't make as good of a tie as doing two whole twists. Now, if you look at my ties here, you're gonna notice that they're pretty much uniform and here I'm gonna try to wiggle them and you're gonna see that there's no movement. That's good. That means that they're tight and that they won't move the rebar. If your ties are loose, that means you can wiggle them even slightly and that's pretty much an adjustable tie and you don't want adjustable ties. You want your rebar to stay where it is. What you always need to remember when you're tying rebar is that every second counts and every fraction of a second counts. Now, the most important part of your tying is your rhythm, your accuracy, and your process. You wanna make sure that you don't have so many steps that it slows you down. It might be a great tie that never moves, but you know what? You might cut it in the end. So you don't wanna add in too many steps. However, we don't wanna sacrifice too much quality of our ties. The ties that I've showed you is a good compromise between quality and speed of your work. There's not too many steps such that it's gonna slow you down, but there's just enough such that the quality of your ties still remains high. Tying takes a lot of practice. It took me about two months to finally be able to get somewhat good at tying. So don't be discouraged when your ties look like shit at the very beginning. Remember, this takes a lot of dexterity and it takes time to build that. Improve your hand-eye coordination through juggling, through push-ups or whatever. Try to do anything where you're able to lock something with your eyes and grab it immediately with no falter and no misses. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys got a good sense of how to do a single wire snap tie. Remember, this is your most important tie. This is what, you, what you're gonna be doing most often and it's incorporated in all other ties. So this is what you're gonna wanna get good at. Remember to always be open to change and stay efficient on the job site. Thanks for clocking in. I'll see you guys next time.